Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back into the studio. Today I thought would be a decent day to do another questions and answers video. I didn't solicit any new questions this time because last time I got so many that I couldn't answer all of them. I'll be continuing to sculpt on Big Kronos while answering the questions. If you want to ask me questions personally and get feedback on your own work, then you can check out my Patreon page. There's a link in the description below. Okay, let's get to it. The first question is, how did you learn anatomy? My interest in anatomy started way before I even began sculpting. I remember becoming aware, let's call it, of anatomy and the importance of understanding it while attending high school. I was really into sports and athletics at the time and I went to a high school for athletes. So the entire program of the school was centered around athletics and working out. In order to be an athlete, you need to work out, of course. And this is where understanding your own body comes in. We were thought anatomy not from the perspective of what it looks like, but how it functions and what it does. And ultimately, I think this was a very useful thing for me. Obviously, at that time, for athletics, it was useful, but also later on, as an artist, it was useful. It's not a bad idea to have some understanding of not simply what the muscles look like, but what they actually do. Obviously, you don't learn the intricate visual nature of forms while trying to learn functional anatomy. So it wasn't really until I started pursuing art a little bit later in my 20s that I started to try and learn the visual aspect of anatomy. And in the beginning, I would do what everyone does. I would use anatomy books and a lot of reference, usually from bodybuilder magazines. And the reasons I used bodybuilders as reference is because everything is so exaggerated and obvious on them. So that was good for learning how to sculpt figures from imagination, which I needed to do in the beginning because I sculpted in my bedroom and there was no models around. When I arrived at the Florence Academy of Art back in 2014, I attended the anatomy lectures and learned anatomy for artists in a classroom setting for the first time. At the same time, we were sculpting and drawing from life, so I got to see all the variety that exists. Even though we are all the same bones and muscle, the variety in nature seems infinite. The lectures were based on the book Artistic Anatomy by Paul Richer which is very good, if not a little bit dry and technical. I would still recommend this book though, I think it's a good book, and I'd also recommend Anatomy for Sculptors by Uldis Serens. This book is way more visual, which I think is super useful. Simply knowing where the muscle originates and inserts is not really going to be enough, and looking at a model might not give you all the information you would like or would need. Now, don't get me wrong, I think that working from life is the best way to learn, and the best way to work. But if you don't know what you're looking at or how what you're looking at is put together or the underlying structures that are present or do not have a decent understanding of how to conceptualize and approach anatomy, it's going to be difficult. Okay, next question. Can one start with learning sculpture directly and give lesser priority to learning how to draw? Drawing and sculpture seems different, but they are one and the same. There is more that makes these two disciplines similar than makes them different, I believe. At the Florence Academy, we spend more time in the sculpture program drawing than we do sculpting. And there's a reason for this. Sculpture of the human body, the way that we approach it, is basically drawing with the clay. Drawing at its core is seeing. With a little practice, most of us can learn how to handle a pencil decently. Most of us are able to hold a pencil correctly even when we show up to school, even if we haven't drawn anything at all. But being able to hold a pencil and make marks on a paper does not make you good at drawing. You have to be good at seeing, or perhaps it's better described as observing. And sculpture is the exact same thing. The way we approach sculpture at the Academy is we observe from four separate views and essentially build the outline from these four views and then connect them. Your ability to do this well is based on how well you are able to observe your subject. Even if you lack in-depth knowledge of anatomy, you have a chance here because we can observe from a model. However, this skill of observation and how to strategize how to observe is much easier to practice while drawing. You eliminate a lot of distracting elements while drawing. You are not working with more than one view while you're drawing and you don't have to worry about the volumes, for example. Now you can certainly sculpt without drawing much, but I think if you do both, you will only get 
better as a visual artist. Practicing drawing can only make you a better sculptor. Next question. How and where can we talk a two week or one month course? Hopefully by the summer. Now I can't promise anything. Who knows what the world will look like by the time summer <laughs> rolls around. But hopefully the Florence Academy of Art will have their summer workshop this July like they normally do, and, and ho hopefully I'll get to be a part of it. But who knows? We'll see. I promise nothing. Let's thank today's sponsors, my Patreon supporters on Patreon, who have ensured the continued existence of this channel and allowed me to upgrade my gear bit by bit, making better looking and better sounding content for all of you watching. Now, if you're interested in supporting the channel, or perhaps interested in getting personal feedback on your sculptures from me, then Patreon is the place for you. You'll get in-depth feedback on techniques and how you can apply them to your own work. Anything sculpture related goes, we can talk about armatures, supplies, mold making, or anything you might need help with in your sculpting endeavors. So check it out, there's a link in the description below. Next question. What are your favorite materials to use? Everything from clay to tools. I'm pretty simple when it comes to clay and tools. I use terracotta clay from Montelupo here in Italy. And that's the dark green clay you see me use in most of my videos. It's very simple, smooth terracotta clay or smooth water-based clay, if you will. For smaller works, I like to use oil-based clay. And here I prefer Chavant NSP Soft or Medium and Chavant Le Botouche. However, clay is a very personal thing. So if I were you, I would just try a bunch as you're starting out and find one or two or three that you like a lot and stick with those. As far as tools go, I have a bunch of different tools, but there are three different tool manufacturers that I keep going back to. My wooden tools are from Tiranti in the UK. The loop tools are from Kemper and the rake tools are from Sculpture House. And the butter knife is from my kitchen. You can find links to all the stores where you can purchase these tools in the description below, except for the butter knife. Next question. Would you consider having your own studio in the future? And if so, what would be your advice on how to look for a studio space or what to look for in a studio space? Having my own private studio would be very nice. Right now I do have my own studio space, but it's part of the Florence Academy of Art, so it's not really mine, I guess. I don't own it or anything like that. I'm very happy where I am right now, and I don't really feel the need to actively pursue finding my own studio at the moment. There is, of course, some freedoms allowed when you have your own studio. Doing my own private classes and workshops would be great and something that I would perhaps like to do in the future. We'll see. As far as what to look for in a sculpture studio, I would look for a smooth concrete or tile floor so you can roll your work around without it snagging and falling over or anything like that. Ground floor is a must as a sculptor, and so is big doors to help with transporting big molds, moving big molds. I would also like to have the opportunity to control the lighting situation. Natural light is great, but if I had to choose, I'd rather have full control over the light. And perhaps most important is the size of the studio. You need to be able to step back at least three times the height of your work or your model in order to observe them without perspective distortion. So that would be my first priority. Is the space big enough to accommodate the kind of work that I want to make? Next question. As a sculptor slash artist, is it important or necessary to find your style and stick to it for as long as possible? Or should you always look to improve your work, your technique and adapt your artistic style to the current vision that you might have? I always found that when I was pressing to create my own style or have my own style, it felt forced and fake and I didn't enjoy it. So I try not to think about it at all actually and just let my style be a byproduct of how I go about sculpture. Some of the things that interests me the most about sculpture are things that lend themselves towards a refined end result. Transitions, for example. So it's not really that I want a smooth finish. My finishes aren't really that smooth, actually. They are just smooth enough to where the transitions between forms are allowed to play a major role in the success or failure of the work. If the work was more loosely finished, that wouldn't be really be the case. You wouldn't be able to see the transitions. 
So it's not a specific style or finish for the sake of that style or finish. The style and finish is the result of me pursuing what interests me about sculpture and what I enjoy working on. Now perhaps you could consider the subject matter part of the style, I don't know. I try my best to never think about style at all and just sculpt whatever I want to sculpt. Now, some sculptures do come out different and that might be because they serve a different purpose sometimes. I think that's the case. The maquettes, for example, that I make are much looser, much more rough. It might also be because they are much smaller and trying to finish them to the same refined level that I do with larger work is really time consuming and tedious. But I don't really know why they tend to end up rougher than the larger work. I'm really opposed to the idea that you need to stick to one style for the sake of marketing. Galleries do prefer that you have a body of work with a very similar style or theme. And if you go down that route, good for you, you know, but that's not really something that I'm interested in pushing for. So I just do what feels natural and try not to think too deeply about what my style is. I sculpt for the sake of sculpting, and so whatever happens and comes out of it, comes out of it. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and want to learn sculpture from me or just support the channel, check out my Patreon page. I put up a new video every Thursday, so stay tuned for a new video next week. Hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever a new video comes out. And if you enjoyed the video, click the like button and share it with your friends and family. It helps me out a lot. Thank you for watching, stay creative, and I hope to see you in the next one.